All right, guys, so I ended up, I ended up uh, locking in and digging my heels in on a topic, and I was going back and forth a little bit with Joe Rogan and Brendan Schaub, and the, it, it's all brushed and it's all behind us. Uh, but I was glad that it was in this regard, and not just because I like those guys. It had nothing to do with the fact that I like and respect those guys. It had to do with a specific point about the marketing aspect of this sport, and it had to do with the point that you'll have people within the business that are so locked in that this is a sport about punches and kicks, when first and foremost it's a business about promotion and PR and the drawing of an emotion. And there's even fans within the sport who will watch it, and the fans always get a pass. Fan can do anything they want. It's up to the entertainer and up to the performer to captivate and relay and draw the correct emotion from the fans. So the fan's never wrong, but it does still surprise me in some regards where a fan would come forward and go, oh no, we don't like any of that. We just like these guys are stars. And you go, okay, I understand that concept, but let's break down why they are. And it's marketing 101. And I can just remember when Conor McGregor got started. And the Conor story has been rewritten. I have heard people that have a voice and some influence within this space say why Conor has been so, uh, so successful. And a lot of times they'll start right off the bat with the wrong notion and they'll say because it turned out he was a great fighter, the best fighter in the world. but. They're rewriting that. Before Conor won the interim championship, before he beat Jose Aldo for the title, before he beat Eddie for the title, before he went 30 minutes with Floyd Mayweather, he had already sold out four arenas. To retell you the Conor McGregor story, on his third fight within the company, he was the main event and sold out an arena. That's an achievement that most fighters will never reach, either one of those, to get to main event or to have the success of, uh, of selling out. He did them both in the same night on his third fight. So we didn't know how great he was. As a matter of fact, the promotion didn't even know. If you guys will remember the story more accurately, the hardcore fans were actually upset because they felt that the promotion was carrying him. The fans were right in that regard. The promotion was bringing him along, so they took one look and go, hey, this guy can't be as good as he appears to be, but we sure know he's a box office draw. Let's not get rid of him fast. Let's squeeze this Let's squeeze this piece of fruit a little bit here. Everything caught up turned out that he was a really great talent, but what I'm saying is if you want to study the Conor story, you have to understand it wasn't just because he was a two division champion. It happened long before that. So then you get the really smart guy that wants to come in and go, oh no, 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 no. He was a big star because he was great at talking trash. He could talk trash. I was sitting back going, I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that term means. Was he good with his words? Was he eloquent? Did he put on a little bit of a different outfit that made him stand out? Did he know when to hit lines at a press conference? Was, was he unafraid to speak up? Was he unafraid to work really hard and get in front of that camera as many times as possible? Yeah, he did a really good job with that, and that helped to really drive him up. But to sit back and say, well, he talked trash. I was going, I don't, I don't even know what you're saying. I don't know what the definition of that is. If I want to give somebody some advice, a future fighter to come in and be able to copy what it is they're seeing and got somebody else there. If I'm handing them a blueprint, I've got to understand it. I don't know what the definition of he talked trash was. So then you had some people come out and they were very close. They were very close to what Connor was doing. They said he was selling confidence, that that was a large part of what he was selling. Now, I like that. They are right on that. Connor was the first of this generation, this new generation is a little bit tough for me, right? They are a little bit more of I'm gonna pick and choose my fights and everything's gotta be right. And I gotta fight the guy ranked in front of me that gets me, man, shut up. Just go out and do the fight. Go do whatever fight is offered and then take care of the rest. That's what Connor did. Connor wasn't fighting guys ranked in front of me. If we wanna use Connor for an example, he wasn't fighting guys that were ranked in front of him. He wasn't taking out the number three guy and then the number two guy and he moved into the number one guy. He wasn't doing any of that. He was selling out arenas, he was main eventing, he was captivating audiences and he was saying all the right things while backing them up with really good actions. But plenty of guys do that. That isn't a blueprint and a recipe. What more was going on there? What more was going on there? You've never heard anybody say this, and the reason you've never had anybody reveal this for you is because nobody can step back and understand the sport, and that always does surprise me. What Connor was a master of and what his gimmick was, and the wool that he pulled over everybody's uh, eyes, was his power within the industry. And Whenever you do a call out in the sport, you want a couple of things. First off, you want a headline. If you're going to call somebody out, you want that to make a headline, but your second priority, and if you can tie them together, you've hit the, the, the grand slam. 
You need to get the fight that you call for. If you don't, you will look weak. And I don't mean you're going to look physically weak. I mean you will look weak within the industry. You will look weak within your pull within the business. So it's very important when you go after a fight that you get that fight. Conor McGregor went out from day one and began to market and sell himself as though he had power within the industry. He was going to be a co-promoter. He was going to be a partner. As a matter of fact, if they didn't make him a co-promoter, which has never been done and still to this day didn't happen, but if that didn't happen, he was going to go become a promoter himself. In fact, he's already talked to pay-per-view partners. He's already got a deal in place at Croke Park in Ireland. He's already got an opponent picked out. It was all a ruse. It was a ruse, a red flag for anybody should be when the entertainer comes out and tells you the message, there's the red flag that a work is going on. A good marketer will come out and identify himself before somebody can do it for him. So when Connor came out and did that, it was great. And nobody pushed back and was part of his shtick. And he would say it right up there at the press conference with Dana White saying, what's Dana gonna do? Come out and go, no, hey, no, you're not. Dana's a promoter. He's not gonna anti-promote him. He's going to let him have his microphone and go out and do his thing. So it was really great and it was effective. But where the surprise for me is when people within the industry were coming out and saying that about him. And you got to stand back and go, guys, if it were true, you would have said it. When it's a work, you're repeating what he said. I'm now seeing debates uh, going on of who needs who more, Connor or the UFC. And it's a very silly topic. It's hard to even quantify with words because it's so ridiculous. The UFC would like Connor to fight. He's good for business. He does good pay-per-view numbers. He does good live gates. He comes with an expense that is greater than any other fighter. So when somebody wants to pretend that they understand the business, but then they never want to offer you the expense side of things, I find that annoying. I will happily concede that they just happen to be right on this one. They just happen to have this one right. Uh, then at the end of the day, the bottom line uh, looks a lot better with Connor. But to make believe that he is some kind of a power in the industry, look, he's under an exclusive contract. If he's ever going to fight again, he needs them to put a signature on the paper that they then need to send him. They've got the power. And it's a very ridiculous question to make believe anything else, but I've seen people within the industry that have some level of influence that had this ruse pulled over them, but they weren't smart enough to stand back and go, wait a minute, that's the gimmick. That's what the work is. There is people within the company that cannot stand Conor McGregor. Whether it's something personal or it's jealousy, whatever it could be, you won't hear anybody ever speak out and say something bad about Conor. Why? Because they've fallen for the ruse. They think that he has power. They think that it may directly negatively impact their career. The only people that will ever call out Conor McGregor is somebody in his weight class trying to get a fight with him. There's guys at 205 pounds that can't stand him. There's guys at 125 pounds that hate the guy. None of them would ever speak up. They marked out for his gimmick and they think that he actually has some kind of power. A great example was uh, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, when the UFC sold, Ari came in, he raised a bunch of money, he went, he went to some people. Mark Wahlberg was one of the guys that wrote out a check and got X amount of shares of the company, however many he bought. They went to Mark Wahlberg on the streets in Hollywood, I think it was a TMZ interview, and they asked him about Connor, and he had good things to say, because yeah, he's a big star, but I mean, he kind of blew it off. He's like, yeah, Connor, Connor's a big star right now. Yeah, if he wants something, then let's get it for him. Mark Wahlberg understood, coming from the world of entertainment, okay, a guy only has pull within the movie he is assigned to. So Johnny Depp, who is huge in that space, is a huge talent and is a box office draw right now, will have say and influence. He'll be able to diva out a little bit. He'll be able to flex a little bit here on a project that he's working on, but not on the industry as a whole. The Rock, who is the single most bankable star in Hollywood right now. Will Smith, who is the second most bankable star in all of Hollywood right now. Brad Pitt, who is the sixth most bankable star in all of Hollywood right now, will have influence and say over the direct projects that they're working on. Conor McGregor will have say and influence over the direct shows that he's involved in, but not over the industry. To make believe anything else is a level of ridiculousness that the marks fell for. Conor created a narrative. You're having... Errol Hawani's out there arguing the fact 
that Connor is more powerful than the industry. I've seen Boss Rutan, who's got a good show and a big level of influence. I've seen him go out and say, Connor's holding all the chips right now. UFC has to do it his way. I've seen people who have knowledge within the space still get this one wrong. And the first red flag should be that they got the idea that they're now perpetuating from the entertainer himself. A good marketer will identify himself before you have time to do it. If you don't understand that, you're not a worker. You are a mark.